Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID system based on a non-operable network attached storage device Linksys NSS4000. I'll show you how to create a RAID, how to add a new volume, a new user, and how to create a shared folder. Network attached storage devices were developed to back up data from computers. With huge amounts of information created for various purposes nowadays, such devices can also be used as the main storage option. Whenever a NAS system breaks down, there is a risk that users may lose access to all of the data they store within such device. Although network-attached storage devices are pretty reliable in terms of ensuring data security, and the use of RAID principle in creating such storage systems gives a considerable reduction in the chances of data loss, nobody can promise you will get a 100% guaranteed protection. Just as any mechanical device and NAS may break down one day, causing you to lose your data the moment you no longer have access to the disk array inside it. Luckily, when an NAS device breaks down, the data remains intact but inaccessible, unless you have a proper third-party software tool to use. In today's video, I'll show you how to choose a good data recovery utility to use with a NAS system. For starters, let's explore how to build a RAID system on this specific Linksys NAS device. In the NAS Manager menu, open Storage RAID. On the right, you will see the list of all drives connected to this device. Select the drives you want to use in building your RAID system. From the list below, choose the RAID level and click Add. A warning appears saying that all data on the selected devices will be removed. Click OK to continue. The time required to create a RAID system may vary depending on the total capacity of the drives and the RAID level that you have selected. You can monitor the RAID building progress by checking its status column here. When the process is complete, it will appear in the RAID arrays table. The drives used to build this array will not be available for creating another array, even if you want to do it later. While the RAID is being created, you can add a new volume. Jump to the Volumes tab. From the drop-down menu, select the array where the new volume should be located. Give the name and size. and set the access password if necessary. When all the properties are given, click Add. That's all, the volume is created. Now you can add a new user and configure permissions. To add a new user, go to the tab Access – Users. Click Add here. In the new window that opens, give the new username and group. Set the password and then type it again in the Confirm password field. If necessary, add the full user's name and email address. These two fields are optional. Now click OK and apply. The new user has been added. To continue with other settings, you have to wait until the resyncing process is complete. By default, the RAID array is created with the XFS file system, and you can't change it into another file system you prefer. When the resyncing process is over, the option to configure shared folders will be available. Open the tab Shares and click Create Share. Give it a name. Find an available location and check the corresponding boxes for access permission rights. Then enable network protocols. Add the users whom you want to assign certain permissions. After the volume is created, you can access the disk array and check if it works properly by writing some data to the array. Connect to it by FTP or in any other way. If you lose access to data stored on a network attached device as a result of a hardware error, a controller failure, or other hardware issues, the data on the disks remains intact and can be handled with specialized data recovery tools. To retrieve the data from the disks, you can try using any of Linux operating systems. For most NAS servers, Linux is their natural environment, as they are formatted in one of the file systems supported by Linux. 
However, if you know little about this operating system, we don't recommend trying this method. A single mistake in commands may erase all information on the hard disks. The best solution would be to use a specialized tool for recovering data from network-attached storage systems, and this is Hetman RAID Recovery. It supports most popular file systems, technologies, and RAID types, and in most cases it will be able to rebuild the damaged RAID automatically, even if the controller is missing. Before you proceed, make sure you have enough data cables to connect all the drives. If your motherboard has less SATA ports than necessary, you can use all kinds of adapters and expansion cords. Also, you will need a hard drive with a capacity equal or exceeding the amount of the information you are going to, to recover. You can use external hard disks, another network touch storage, or other storage devices. Take the disks out of the NAS device and connect them to a Windows computer. When the operating system has booted, open Disk Management and check if the added disks are recognized. Windows may suggest to initialize or format the drives to be able to access them. Remember to never agree to either operation, because it can erase the remaining information completely. Download, install, and start the data recovery tool. Hetman RAID Recovery will automatically rebuild the damaged RAID system with the available disks. You will see the disk array in the Drive Manager. You will see detailed information on the RAID system below. This volume is based on XFS file system. To access the volume contents, you need to scan it first. Right-click on it and choose Open. Choose the scan type to run and click Next to start searching for lost files. Wait for the process to be over and then switch to Search results by clicking Finish. The program has found all the files that have been written to the disk array. And their contents can be checked with the Preview feature. To recover files, select the ones you want to recover and click Recovery. Choose the disk where to save them and specify the directory. Then click Recovery and Finish. After that, follow the paths you have chosen and check if the recovered files are there. Even if the program failed to recognize and rebuild your disk array automatically, you can still use the RAID constructor, but it requires you to know all the information about this damaged disk array. Select Manual mode and click Next. Then select the RAID type, the block size in order, select the disks in the array, and specify their order using the up and down arrow buttons. Add empty disks instead of any disks that are shown as missing. If you get the properties right, the RAID system will be displayed as having at least one partition. When all the properties are given, click Add. After that, the RAID system will appear in the Drive Manager. Now the final step is to scan it and recover your data. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck. While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments on the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's dishonorable invasion.